They want to be treated fairly. I understand. I know we're going to talk about health care tonight. People want the same thing. I know that. We may have differences in how we think it ought to be to be, uh, be delivered, but I understand that people want the same thing. My life in public service did not start in Congress. I started working in my church. I started in my local town on the Environmental Commission, and then on the Open Space Commission, and then as a mayor. My public service started in a family foundation that my wife and I have run now for 13 years. And, and we have done things that, that we think matter to us, to other people. Uh, uh, supporting wounded warriors. We've now given away over 2,500 wheelchairs because our daughter was in a chair her whole life. And we've worked on disaster relief a lot. That's what led me into public service. I want to go back to my daughter just for a moment. Well, I would say, I will say, I will say, shame on you right now. Actually, don't, don't, don't tell me what I'm using. I am going to tell you because this affects my perspective. I'm going to tell you this because it affects my perspective on this issue of health care. I'm not going to tell you all about Grace's life because obviously you've read that to the point you don't care. But I will say this. No, it's not all I say. It's not all I say. It's not all I say. If you want me to listen to you, I'm asking you to listen to me. I'm asking you to listen to me. When my... Have some respect. Have a nice story. I'm very Listen. pleased to have a nice family. I, I commend you. Well, let me, let me finish, and I want you to. We're going to talk about that, too. When you're done, I'm going to continue. This is not a canned response. It's not a canned response. I want you to stop for a moment. Because if you think that this doesn't have an impact on how somebody sees things. When my daughter was born, we made it, my wife and I made a choice to have a child when we knew she was going to be born handicapped. She wasn't supposed to live, and she did live. She wasn't supposed to walk. She didn't walk, she was in a chair. She didn't talk much, but she said a few words. And this child in 11 years has shaped my life more than anybody. So, so if I talk about my daughter too much, well then so be it. But this is the one human being that has impacted my life more than anybody. I, maybe I will write a book. Maybe I will write a book. When I, when I used to come home, when I when I used to come home, were you able to afford her health bills? I had. That's a that's a really good it's a really good question. When my daughter was born, we had in 11 years over a million dollars of insurance bills, uh, health care bills. I had insurance, but but you know what? We didn't have much money in those days. We did not have. Well, we will come back to that. We will come back to that. We will come back to that. I'm not in a hurry. But if you want me to respect you, doesn't it go both ways? When I see when I see the problems in our health care system, if you think that going in and out of hospitals for years sleeping in hospital chairs because we didn't have beds in those days in the hospital rooms i spent days and nights sleeping in a chair and then going to my office in manhattan that was the life that i lived and when my daughter went into a coma when our daughter went into a coma when she was 11 not long after her 11th birthday my wife and i had to make the decision no parent wants to make we had to take our daughter off life support that was my life that was our life I was there when she was born, and the doctor came out and said we need to do surgery on her brain, and I had to ask the doctor, is it a boy or is it a girl? 
That was my life. Th those were the moments that I lived. And when we unplugged life support, she used to lie on my chest as a little baby, and I'd rock her to sleep that night. And when we unplugged life support, I put my head on her chest and I listened to her last arguments. So if you think that I don't care about health care, it's because. Would you would you like to talk about that bill? Would you like to? Okay. You, you can have your opinion. We, you can have you can have your views. But I'm going to say one more thing before we start this dialogue. Some of you tonight have very strong opinions about what you think. There are a lot of people in this room, and I'm going to ask you. You can think what you like about me, but I'm going to ask you for each other's sake to have some respect for each other. Have some respect. If somebody's going to... You're stopping me comments. Oh, if, my if, she's over here talking and bitching and having to tell her to shut up. If, folks, folks, please. <laughs> folks, listen, please. I will not put time limits on your questions tonight. I will not. But if you're going to go on too long because you've got something burning inside of you and you just have to say it, your neighbors will know if you're talking too long. They will. I'm asking you, whatever you think, whatever you think of me, I am, I am asking you to have some respect for your neighbors tonight. And don't go on and on and on. I will also ask that if you don't live in the third district, you not ask a question tonight. This is for people that live in this congressional district. Others, others are here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you. I'm going to. I'm going to ask you to say where you're from, to ask your question, and then I'm going to ask you to let me answer it honestly without booing to the point where other people can't even hear. Because maybe, just maybe, not everyone in the room shares your opinion tonight. I'm going to ask you to show respect for one another. Is that fair? Yes. Is that fair? Whatever you think of me, to do that for each other. 